Hey guys, back once again uh, with the final part of this uh, brick lane vlog on this garage, on the brick and block garage. And uh, yeah, this was one of the more longer form videos, builds that we had, that I managed to get footage of, because I managed to get footage of uh, all two days, even though it was like a three day build, we got... Uh, we got, I got two days worth of recording out of this one. I got the block work day and one of the brick work days. So out of this three and a half day garage, I got two of those days recorded. So um, I hope everyone enjoyed the mortar stand videos because I uploaded them before this last part just to give a little bit of a break up in the type of content I was making because it gets to the point where I just do the same stuff over and over again. You know, another garage, another topic. But it seems people like the topic, uh, topical voiceovers until I get a setup where I can record longer form content with, uh, you know, an action cam and or having a, a laptop slash PC to, or Mac sort of thing to do my editing on. I'm just sort of limited to doing these 15 to 20 minute videos. That's why there's a lot of edits in between, obviously, my courses. So I try to cut down the length as, you know, as short as possible. So that's why I edit between me putting the line up uh, as I saw a comment, a highlight. And you know, it's just, it's general. I just want, you know, constant, you know, brick lane footage instead of, you know, downtime in between courses or me walking backwards and forwards if I'm gonna go speak to a faultless driver. <laughs> and a lot of the time there's, you know, there's guys who'll come up and chat to me, whether it's site managers or, you know, other guys on site will come and chat and I have to cut those. Or people walk past in full view of the camera and you know you can see details of the face and identify them and identify you know passers by so i've got to cut the footage or you know do some angles where it'll fade into a different angle um obviously you know i obviously i zoom the foot you know a lot of the footage in to hide or obscure people's faces and make the work i'm doing more clear uh, so if you guys like the clearer, closer up footage where I, you know, I zoom it in and change the camera angle slightly every time I get uh, closer to the camera or further away, uh, just let us know in the comments because obviously I'm really open to doing action cam footage. But if I do do that, I'm going to have to record, I'm going to have to edit it on my tablet, which I'm not sure I can do, but I'm going to have a go. And then... Uh, and then I'll have to get a helmet that accommodates, you know, the helmet, the helmet mount for the camera. But it's going to be just a few course at a time. So I'm just going to get the, uh, you know, the helmet camera, uh, well, the GoPro out of my bag. Because uh, I've started bringing the rucksack, on, rucksack onto site now ever since uh, the good weather's come along. And uh, I've started recording. So, I, you know, I'll put a wide angle lens in my carrier bag. I'll put, you know, it's a rucksack, but I'll put, you know, like some drinks or, you know, Something if I'm, you know, like a, I've got a battery pack, I use a battery pack on site, so that allows me to get a, an extra 20, 30 minutes of footage. So I've, uh, I've been taking steps to, uh, to you know, recording different types of content. And as you know, on price, there's certain work that you've just got to crack on and get done to, uh, you know, to make your money on. And there's other work, like on solo days especially, I saw a I saw a comment also saying like on a working on your own there's no wages to pay and that's the biggest reason I do the you know I do the recording on days where it's it's just myself or um, sometimes I record when my dad's with me but it's it's more you know more likely than not I'm I'm sort of going a bit faster on them days when he's with me because he's feeding me gobbo and bricks etc etc and I'm not really stopping for anything so. I tend to just get in the flow and keep work, keep working, but I'm gonna make a concerted effort, especially when I've got the helmet cam. Uh, you know, is to just you know slide the helmet cam, press record, and obviously it's something you could just put on and forget about. So that's my idea with the helmet cam footage is to sort of get a couple of different types of uh, angles and a couple of different types of footage from uh, one job to to the next. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a time in the you know in the future where I'll, I'll be back on some plots at some point depending on how desperate they are for the, for, for a particular house up uh, because obviously me being one on one and sometimes solo I'm, obviously I don't produce the volume of work of two brick layers so uh, although I'm not far behind in some respects with the uh, with the times I work and you know on set days you know I, I mean, I'll, I'll put some good work but uh, 
there'll be a point where I'll get on some houses. So as soon as I get back on the plots, I'm going to do a, a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of uh, some topics towards house building. Uh, at the moment, it's just general bricklaying and sort of site advice I'm giving, really. Uh, the, I'm limited by the sort of type of work I'm doing at the moment, which is fucking great earners. You know what I mean? Like, you can't be, you know, if you can build a garage in two days, you've earned fucking tremendous money. If you can build, you know, a, a, panel, a big panel of boundary wall to fly, fly in a day, you've earned fucking tremendous money. You know, at the moment, like, I'm at a fucking ideal scenario is a one on one. It's just like your dream scenario, you know, doing walls of garages. Uh, you know, in uninterrupted work, really, um, continuous, and you know, a bit of day work thrown in for good measure sometimes, you know, it's, it's sort of the ideal situation for a one-on-one, and which, you know, most most bricklayers, if they could have the opportunity to go one-on-one or find the right bloke to work with, would take this, you know, you know, any day of her working on the houses, because a lot of the time there's so much hassle when it comes to, you know, getting an house ready for inspection or, you know, square, squaring a floor, you know, squaring a, a lift up to floor, uh, you know, your fucking murder lift where it fucking completely murders your money. Um, it's, you know, there's so much can go wrong, like the lintels can't, might not be there, you know, the window formers might not be there, that's been a common one. Uh, you know, the specials aren't there if you've got a bay on the front or you've got a, a certain sill, a lot of the time sills, the right sills aren't there. I've had it. I've had it the same thing when I've been, you know, doing the fourth lift on an house, squaring it to wall plate, and you know, there's there's stuff missing all the time. There's like, you know, there's sills missing, or there's stuff you've got to alterate if you're taking over a lift. Uh, it's just there's all sorts of things that can, you know, put a spanner at which weeks. Which at the moment, I'm happy for the steady, steady garage, like a garage a week, or you know, whatever I'm getting. Like, like a garage will last me a good three days. Throwing in with a bit, we have a couple of panels of wall, and we're laughing really. Especially on a Friday, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a concerted effort to finish earlier on a Friday, because I've been working a full day every day. So, sort of Monday to Monday to Wednesday when my dad's working with me, I'm sort of like, a, I'm sort of a half eight, well, half eight, well, three thirty, quarter to four, sort of man, and then on your Thursdays, I'm normally like a, you know, an half eight, well, fucking. Uh, half four quarter to five and then on a friday i've been a, i've been an half eight well like four o'clock again so it's i'm gonna be ideally wanting to get that friday down to like a one one o'clock two o'clock finish in general just reduce the reduce the hours uh, you know on a friday uh, because i've got i've got a retaining wall that i'm building uh i've got i'm just digging it out. i'm starting to dig it out next weekend on my own house i've got a retaining wall in back garden uh that i'm gonna I'm gonna build myself, so I've gonna got dig. I'm gonna be digging that for a good month. Um, depending on how, how deep I've got to dig, I've just got to find the levels first. I'm gonna be transferring some levels uh, from my patio uh, and just transfer the level outwards. Since I ain't got a laser level, I'm trying minimising the sort of amount of tools I'll need. And then I've gonna. Then I've got uh, with that. I've got to find sort of how deep I'm digging out. And then once I've dug it out to the depth I want, I've got to find. How many blocks I'm going to be putting in, in my retaining wall? Because I'm, I'm ideally thinking, I just get a pack of dumpy blocks and go a few courses high with dumpies, depending on how I'm going to, how I'm going to make this little retainer. Because I'm, my garden's on a, on a really steep, um, steep decline, it's running down, and I want to put a step in the middle, make a, make, make a level off section at the bottom for my little, uh, for my little boy, and uh, you know any future children we have to uh, set a play area up. I'm not sure whether I'm going to build the player myself. Obviously, a lot of woodwork I've been doing with these tables and stuff. I'm, you know, I'm getting more familiar with, you know, joinery work. So I'm going to might make the player myself because it's pretty simple. Um, with these with these power tools, it makes it fucking accessible to anyone. Uh, which it's just it's just it's, you know it's good if you can do it yourself cheaper. I'm always an advocate of that. Uh, so I've got that to build. I've got like a, I've set out a work, a program of when I want to get it completed. So I've got a, I've got a month to, month to dig it out. This is just doing it on a weekend, and then I've got a, then I've got a two week to concrete it because I'm going to buy an electric mixer. I'm going to get one for about two hundred and fifty quid, and then I'm going to con- mix concrete myself with our grits. We're going to order up. I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a gate on my fence because I don't have one at the moment to get around the back. 
put a get put a gate on and then get some aggregates dropped shovel all them into a nice pile on a tarp uh, you know get plenty of sand get a big bag of sand dropped um, mainly to put to uh, to fill in any uh, obviously fit mortar and everything like that uh, but it's a decent length is my garden so uh, I'm putting it width way so it's a decent width so I've got I've got a lot of work ahead of me on weekends coming up on my own house so I'm not I'm gonna try and limit myself in the week and not knack myself out and only try and work probably one one late day um, one late day if I can you know if I can just help it and then try and get me solo final Friday day which I'm normally solo for uh, you know as short as possible while still getting a decent wage in um, obviously I got rained off uh, last week twice uh, I got rained off lost about half a day when I was topping my wall off so I got about which should have been like just over a day's work turned into like a day and a half uh, so obviously I lost a bit of time there and then I'll if the weather's anything like I might lose some this week with rain but hopefully we've got another clear one coming I've heard there's a heat wave coming so I'm hoping for that so we can just get some dry weather and then uh, yeah well we're coming up to the last course of blocks on this garage uh, I was presuming this week coming up after because uh, we're on, for, on Sunday now which I'm recording this I was presuming I'd be going back here Monday to square this up but I've got another garage I'm starting so hopefully if I can get some footage of this other garage it's a you know a single skinner so um don't have any of this banding detail on just a nice straight up garage obviously joint in the back but I'm gonna I'm gonna build big corners this time I'm gonna use profile so I'm gonna build a six course corner tailed out bang the profile on and then uh well, I'm going to build a six-cut corner on each side, join them up, two profiles on, run a line between the profiles and rack a big corner back at one side, moving all, moving profiles all the way up. And, uh, you know, point a full corner up, 20 core side at least, and then move to the other one, move the line back down, line them up all the way up, corner, point up, and then normally it takes me for two corners, probably but till about one o'clock, and then I'll always make sure I've got like a good... You know, three quarters of a tub, if not a full tub, and I'll blast in between the uh, two corners in, and uh, you know, should get half a garage up in that time frame pretty easily. And then I'm going to repeat the same process again with tailing out a big corner at the front using the profiles of the other side of the garage if if everything goes to plan. And then I'm going to use I'm going to build another big corner at the other side, but tail the back in as I'm building the other corner. And then same again, fill in the two big corners, smash it all the way in. And uh, we should have, uh, you know, hopefully I can take it up 22 course. But if I can take it 20, just depends on how far away from plots it is and where it, you know, resides to the other plots. So I don't want to take it too high or else that forces the bricklayers to take their work ridiculously high as well. Because obviously me being a fan of the milk crate, it throws spanners in works when I start taking stuff a bit super high. So... Anyway guys, I've got uh, a lot to talk about in the next uh, video when it comes to pick and dip and stuff. I've been variating my style uh, considerably, so uh, watch out for, for daily vlogs. And I will see you guys in the next video.